Mike. You're worse than an alarm clock. Last you go get the horses. I'll get some breakfast. Well, good use of the grass, Lassie. Counts right in the limit. I'm Roland Hines. I'm Corey Stewart, assigned to the range survey. How are you? Fine. Oh, this is my son, Chuck. How are you, Chuck? What's your dog's name, Ranger? Lassie. Lassie, meet Chuck. <coughs> what can I do for you, Mr. Stewart? Mr. Hines, as you know, all of the ranchers in your area have agreed to cut back the grazing herds 10% this year. And you come snooping around here to see whether we did it or not. I'm not snooping, Mr. Hines. This is national forest land. I'm making an actual count in accordance with the terms of the agreement. So far, everyone has complied. The other ranchers have accepted your uh, plan of grazing foolishness, but Mr. Stewart, I don't go along with it. Well, the size of your grazing permit is based on research from tests made right here on this land. I'll get my map and we'll take a look at them. I think you should see these tests. You will need your map, Ranger. I know where they are. I'll show you. Well, thanks, Chuck. Hey, Ranger, anything I can do? Yeah, take those stakes out of there, will you, Chuck? See, Chuck, this grass has been protected by the wire cage. Now, the rest of the grass in the range has been grazed on. The comparison is going to show how well the grass is being used. Can you reset that cage right over there for me?
Chuck, where's that trend plot? Oh, it's right over there. Here, I'll show you. What are the pictures for? They'll be compared to the pictures taken the same spot last year. Well, can you predict anything now? Not until we get the lab reports. You see, the size you heard this year was based on earlier tests. Come on, son, let's go. We've spent enough time here. Goodbye, Ranger. Goodbye, Chuck. Thanks for your help. Goodbye, Lassie. Strange man, Lassie. Dad? <laughs> yeah. We're grazing too many cattle, aren't we? According to the ranger's figures. Yeah, according to his figures, yes. But what'll happen when he counts them? Nothing's gonna happen. Except the count's gonna add up correct. See that herd over there, son? That's just about how many head we're over. So we're gonna move them over to Macaulay's land for a day or two. Then the ranger's count will add up fine for just everybody. Dad, that's dishonest. Did you say dishonest? That's a new word to be using regarding your dad, isn't it, son? Chuck, let's look at the right and wrong of this situation. Now, the ranger has a figure in his book. He says that's a number of head that we can graze on this government land. Well, I was raised on this land just like you, son. Your grandfather staked this whole area out. He fought men, he fought animals. He was grazing cattle on his land long before there was a forest service. Well, I love this land more than they do. And I know it better than they do. Dad, it's still government land. They're only trying to conserve it. So am I. I don't want to overgraze it any more than they do. But they get their figures out of test tubes and textbooks. Now, who's a better judge, me or them? You saw him taking pictures. He's going to judge this land by pictures. I stood on this land, and I judged it with my own two eyes. I think this grass is good enough. They're going to increase our herd next year. Dad, we've got too many this year. Chuck, let me tell you something. When you've weathered as many blizzards and droughts with these cattle as I have, you're gonna realize that a man must stand on his own judgment. He's gotta stand by his own decisions. Let's get this herd over to Macaulay's. You take that side. Driving down there out of sight. I'll grab that little group down at the lower end. We're all finished here. We'll just put the wire back. Nobody be the wiser. Especially that ranger. But Macaulay's land is private. We have no right to be on it. Macaulay doesn't even graze his cattle there because of those danger spots. Now, look, son, I've reasoned with you all day. The danger down there is overrated. Now, get those cattle moving. Chuck. Look, son, I'm a little on edge. When we're all through here, we'll talk some more about it, all right? Yes,
it came from. Easy, Chuck. We'll get you out of there. I don't think I can hold on much longer. Hang on tight now. I can't. It hurts.
good hold on that, Chuck. Put your arm around that cat. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Thanks. She did practically everything. You weren't about to let this calf drown, were you? No. Well, you see, it's kind of my fault it was in there. Are those your cattle? Yeah. What are they doing here? You'd rather I talk to your dad about it? Do you like traveling? Yeah, sure. Okay. Go on, get on home. Get on. What happened? How'd you get so muddy? Ranger Stewart and Lassie, they pulled me out of a sinkhole. Me in a camp. Well, are you all right? Chuck wouldn't tell me anything, Mr. Hine. But according to my map, that's private property. It belongs to Mr. McCauley. The fence was cut, and those cattle have your brand on them. Well, I guess that tells about everything. I was going to hide those with them. It's just about the number I'm over. I didn't cut my herd according to the permit. Well, you said it was dishonest and illegal. It was. You said it was dangerous. It was, son. It was almost fatal. Well, I suppose there's other consequences. Not if those extra cattle are off the range by next week. Ranger, we both want better grazing land, right? That's right. Well, I realize that we can do a lot more by working as a team. Dad, I disobeyed. Brought the other cattle back to be counted. You know, son, I think we both learned a big lesson today. Thanks to Lassie and Ranger Stewart. Thanks. Let's get you in some dry clothes. Let's go. 